Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt. We turn now to one of the more interesting poems of Walt Whitman's deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass, Pioneers, O oh, Pioneers. Uh, really one of the great examples of Whitman's experimenting with rhythm. Uh, we've got a marching rhythm going on here. I want right away to dedicate this set of comments to my son and his wife who today leave for their final deployment and will be gone for some time. And I just want to say to both of them that you are in all of our prayers and we appreciate the sacrifice not only of my son but of all of those who serve in our military now, I want to uh, uh, begin by making an assumption or two here that you've been with us, studying with us at LearnStrong.net. Down that left-hand side, our Talks with Walt is our playlist. And that you've been with us from the very beginning in your deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass from the inscriptions on. We're going to comment on the Eidolans uh, passage that we've already talked about. And we've gone all the way up through and including an introductory set of comments on this Birds of Passage, which is the section that we're working with in these seven poems. We've already done Song of the Universal, and now we're going to look at um, this Pioneer's O oh, Pioneer's poem. Now, one of the first things I recommend that you do is to number all 26 stanzas of this poem, so that way as I'm referencing it, you're able to come back and play uh, the game with me. Now, as is always the case, our background information will take us to Norton's, and Norton's will tell us that this poem was first published in numbered stanzas in the 1865 drum taps, again in the 1867 drum taps annex, and in 1871 and 1876 among a Leaves of Grass group entitled Marches Now the War is Over. And this one actually preceded, Pioneers of Pioneers, preceded a little poem called Responde, which some scholars have called the most savage poem ever written by Walt Whitman, and in fact excluded from Leaves of Grass. It's a poem that has lines like this, Let him who is without my poems be assassinated, let there be no God, let the slaves be masters, let the masters become slaves, let none believe in goodwill, he even goes so far as to have a line like this, let the white person again tread the black person under his heel. Let a man seek pleasure everywhere except in himself. Well, for those of us that have been reading our Leaves of Grass, we know that so many of these lines are absolutely the opposite of Whitman's positions. It's one of the most ironic passages, and who knows, maybe at the conclusion of our uh, talks with Walt, we'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the poems that were excluded from Leaves of Grass, and we'll maybe even look at that. Just to continue with Norton, um, this, this poem has a strong trochaic beat, that is to say that, um, that long syllable followed by a short syllable like ladder, ladder, right? Okay, we're going to see this. Obviously designed to be a marching song. It does recall Eidolon's, uh, Norton's will continue, and it stands a structure. It's one of the more than a dozen uh, uh, Leaves of Grass poems in the regularity of the meter. It's very atypical for Walt Whitman. And then uh, Charles B. Willard has called attention to the influence of Tennyson's Ulysses upon uh, this poem, a poem that we have given a whole lot of time energy to elsewhere at LearnStrong.net. That that uh, Ulysses, um, it, it little prophets that an idle king by this still hearth among these barren crags matched with an aged wife, I meet and dole in equal laws into a savage race that hoard and sleep and feed and no, not me. It's more the rhythm though. I can not rest from travels. I will drink life to the lees. We're going to play the, the same game here. Now again, I recommend that you number all 26 stanzas so that way we can work together with it. This isn't just a Western poem as it's sometimes been called. Um, it's really more about a spiritual communal migration as it's often been referred to. And again, we're going to find these lines. Just open your uh, volume 52 times. Pioneers will get used. The word pioneers will get used in this one. Right away, notice we're going to begin uh, with the word come, the very first word in the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. But just hear the rhythm. And I'm not going to read the entire poem this way, but just hear the rhythm. Come, my ten-faced children, follow well in order. Get your weapons ready. 
Have you your pistols? Have you your sharp-edged axes? Pioneers, oh pioneers. So you can hear that, that, uh, that rhythm, right? That long syllable followed by the short syllable, the trochaic line. And notice we're talking now four lines where the fourth line is every time. Pioneers, oh pioneers. By the way, two observations. <clears throat> Pioneer is used as a word in Song of the Broad Axe number three, a text we've already worked with. And I would point out, and I'm not the first to point this out, that really the word pioneers here should be more soldiers, because this is a very marshaled kind of text. Let's go ahead and go to work with it. Come, my tan-faced children. By the way, tan-faced we'll see as, as well in Body Electric. I sing uh, the Body Electric Passage 3. You'll remember tan-faced, handsome. And of course, children takes us to a song of myself. The child asked me, this poem, this set of poems, Leaves of Grass, has constantly been uh, playing around with this idea of children and youth, right? Follow well in order. Get your weapons ready. Listen to all the martial language. Have you your pistols? Have you your sharp edge axes? We, of course, saw this in Song of the Broad Axe. All of this uh, um, notion of war. Pioneers, oh pioneers. Stanza two. For we cannot tarry here. We must march, my darlings. And again, marching rhythms are a part of this. March, my dar darlings. Darlings, interesting. I only use four times in all of these of grass. Run them down if you wish. We must bear the brunt of danger. Now, we're going to come back to this later in this poem. The idea that America is going to embrace the dangerous as opposed to the, um, the, the, the you know, corpulent will be the word that gets used later, the lazy, the fat, the corpulent uh, nations of Europe. We, the youthful, back to the children, sinewy races, all the rest on us depend. Pioneers, oh pioneers, stanza three. Oh, you youths, watch how the word oh gets used, obviously, oh pioneers. Oh, you youths, western youths, we're going to come back to it two lines later. So impatient, full of action, full of manly pride and friendship, Camarero from Song of the Open Road. Plain, I see you, western youths. And of course, it's fun that the word plain gets used in two different ways, obviously. See you, tramping with the foremost, pioneers, oh pioneers, of course, tramping, Song of Myself, Passage 46, I tramp a perpetual journey, come listen all. Stanza four, have the elder racers halted. Now, this is, of course, going to be all about Europe, right? Do they droop and end their lesson? We're going to come back to droop by, by, by uh, passage 14 or stanza 14, right? Uh, remember, Song of Myself, passage five with droop. And uh, do they droop and end their lesson wearied over there beyond the seas? Obviously, we're talking about the great European empires. Um, we take up the task eternal and the burden and the lesson, pioneers of pioneers. In other words, cultural evolution for Whitman, as we've said so many times in these discussions, uh, is all about that, that idea that we knew this was coming, this thing called America. It took a long time to get here. All the past we leave behind, we debouche, you'll remember this from Song of Myself, passage um, um, 49, right? Um, we debouche, uh, that is to say we emerge of, upon a newer, mightier world. We're going to think about Tempest, of course, and Miranda, the brave new world. Varied world, fresh and strong, the world, four times the world gets used in this one. So the world we seize, world of labor and the march. We're back to marching, pioneers, oh pioneers. Uh, six, we... Detachments steady throwing, again, that's military language, right? Down the edges, through the passes, we think about down the edges, the vast edges, drear and naked shingles of the world from Dover Beach, Matthew Arnold's Dover Beach. We've talked about it at LearnStrong.net. Up the mountain steep, conquering, holding, daring, venturing. We obviously think of Song of the Open Road with all this. As we go the unknown ways, pioneers, oh pioneers. We, by the way, just notice the energy. If I were to just read this without explaining it, you would hear more of that marching energy, right? Go for a walk to the park and just read this out loud to the trees and to the leaves and you'll hear what I'm talking about. We, primeval forests felling, of course we think about broad acts. Now, the environmentalist reading of this is going to be late. Wait, wait, wait. Look, just hear what he has to say here. It's obviously disturbing. We, the river stemming, vexing we and piercing deep the minds within. Do you remember in, uh, in our lectures on uh, Milton's Paradise Lost that they're rifling through the ground, the demons here, it's piercing deep the minds within. We the surface broad surveying, we the virgin soil upheaving, right? Um, think about the depression and the, and the dust bowl as it relates to this line. Pioneers, oh pioneers. And then we're going to talk a little geography, and notice all this is going to be west of the Mississippi. Colorado men are we, from the peaks gigantic, from the great Sierras of the high plateaus, from the mine and from the gully, from the hunting trail we come, pioneers, oh pioneers. 
from Nebraska, from Arkansas, Central and the race, are we from Missouri with the continental blood intervened, all the hands of comrades, again, Camaretto, clasping all the southern, all the northern, think about this, okay, obviously 1865, at the end, at, at the end of, the, of the war, this poem is, is going to be published, Pioneers, O oh Pioneers, now to, to, now to passage 10. O oh, resistless, restless race, y'all, the repetition of R. O oh, beloved race, the repetition of O oh, in all. O oh, my breast aches with tender love for all. Notice the repetition of all, all the way through this poem, the unity, right? O oh, I mourn and yet exult. I am wrapped with love for all. Song of Myself, passage 43, the last time that word wrapped gets used. Pioneers, O oh, pioneers. Notice the different sides, the complexities, the different sides. See my children, resolute children, we're obviously back to the youth, by those swarms up on our rear, we must never yield or falter. Now, audiences of, of Whitman's day would immediately recognize here he's making references to the great French epic poem Song of Roland, which we've spoken about as well at LordStrong.net. By those swarms upon our rear, we must never yield or falter. Ages back in ghostly millions, we're going to see this word ghost referenced a little bit later, millions frowning there behind us, urging pioneers, oh pioneers. Now, I talk about this in my discussion of T.S. Eliot's Hollow Men, Eyes, I Dare Not Meet in Death's Dream Kingdom, you'll remember all of this, of um, this idea that those who have crossed with direct eyes to death's other kingdom remember us, if at all, not as lost violent souls, but only as the hollow men, the stuff men. You'll remember this argument that the earlier generations are watching, Whitman says, us, and are they frowning because we're not going fast enough to, to conquer the world, to become the great America we're going to become. 13, notice we're going to get some interesting now language. On and on the compact ranks, compact being all together, with accessions ever waiting, that idea of power, right? Ascensions are happening, right? With the places of the dead quickly filled. In other words, yeah, we lost a lot of people in the Civil War, but we're able to replace them quickly with population. Through the battle, through defeat, moving yet and never stopping, pioneers or pioneers, You'll remember that I said to you guys that the last of our big five theodicy, why did bad things have to happen? For Whitman, it's not why did the Civil War happen to us, but rather why did the Civil War happen for us? For Whitman, he redefines in his theodicy the Civil War as something that was necessary to bring about the great America. It's a very interesting way to look at history for, for Whitman. Oh, passage 14. Oh, to die advancing on. Are there some of us to droop and die? By the way, watch how he starts asking these rhetorical questions. Are there some of us to droop and die? Back to drooping again, right? Has the hour come? Then upon the march, we fittest die soon, and sure the gap is filled. Pioneers, oh pioneers. Now, I, I know Norton's reference Tennyson's Ulysses, but here I'll reference his Tennyson's Charge of the Light Brigade, a text that we've given as well, uh, uh, full lectures on it, learnstrong.net. And of course, we made the observation of Tennyson's poem as being potentially military propaganda. Here, you're probably hearing some of that more propagandizing language as well, which, of course, we know Whitman is more than capable of. Passage 12. Now, we're going to get 11 alls between passage 15 and, uh, and, and passage 17. So now we're at passage uh, 15. All the pulses of the world falling in, they beat for us with the Western movement. Notice capitalized Western beat, holding single or together, steady, moving to the front, all of us, pioneers of pioneers. In other words, Whitman wants to make the argument that we're all moving in this momentous occasion, right? This march, can we call it that? This march together, this martial kind of march together. And it's, and, and all the world's been waiting for this to happen. This is noticed just a rewriting of this idea of a city set on a hill. Whitman is playing in a really important um, vein, a motif in American thought, that America is exclusively special because we are the light, we are the city on a hill, and here, notice, we're all, we're all answering the call that has come from Europe. Life's, passage 16, life's involved in varied pageants, all the forms and shows, all the workmen at their work, of course, Song of the Exposition comes to mind. All the seamen and the landsmen, I told you guys, he loves to play with both land and sea, back to passage 46 of, of Song of Myself, on sea and on land. And then, remarkably, all the masters with their slaves. Now, if you're writing in your, in your copy of Leaves of Grass, you have to pause and go, what? 
Now, of course, I, I told you already that this poem was followed by the Responde poem that never made it into the final edition of Leaves of Grass, where he had the line, let the slave be masters, let the masters become slaves. So Whitman is clearly making some very interesting kinds of comments, right, about what's going on in America specifically as it relates to the issues of race. No question about it. Passage 17. All the hapless silent lovers, by the way, the only time in all leaves of grass that the phrase silent lovers gets used. All the prisoners in the prisons, now this will not surprise us, because you'll remember that several times already in leaves of grass, he will say things about how he wants to be the poet not only of good but also of evil. I mean, back to starting from Pominock and some of those lines, right? All the prisoners in the prisons, all the righteous and the wicked, all the joyous, all the sorrowing, all the living, all the dying, pioneers are pioneers. And then, of course, taking us to Langston Hughes' classic, I Too, a poem that we've given a whole lot of time to at LearnStrong.net, passage 19, um, 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 pa I'm sorry, passage 18. I, too, with my soul and body, you'll go back again to passage 48, a song of myself. I've said that the soul is not more than the body, the body not more than the soul, and nothing, not God, is greater to one than oneself is. We're playing the same game. We, a curious trio, picking, wandering on our way, think about the Odyssey and wandering, through these shores, amid the shadows, with the apparitions pressing, going back to your ghostly millions of passage 12, of, of stanza 12, pressing, pioneers, oh pioneers. This use at passage 19 of the word low will take us back to Song of the Universal number 2. Lo, the darting, boiling orb. It's interesting he uses the word bo uh, uh, bowling, right? Lo, the brother orbs around all the clustering suns and planets. Almost think about prayers of Francis of Assisi here. All the dazzling days. You'll remember passage of 46, a song of myself. You must have it yourself to the dazzle of the light, right? Dazzling days, all the mystic nights with dreams. Back to the poem Sleepers, which we've referenced already so many times, although it's coming for us. Uh, of course, the word mystic, Whitman loves this word. Pioneers, oh pioneers. Um, passage 20. These are of us, they are with us, all for primal needed work, while the followers there in embryo wait behind. I told you of his love of the modern science of his day. We today's procession heading, we the route for travel clearing, pioneers of oh pioneers. Whitman, as we've said in so many lectures, was this true optimist that he really did believe that what was happening right then and there in front of him was to give birth to you guys. Isn't that interesting? To you guys. It's, as we've said in Crossling Brooking Ferry and any number of other poems, it's like he knew somehow or another what he was predicting was what ultimately would come to pass. It's kind of fascinating to read. Leaves of Grass that way, right? And then at passage 21, not to, to be completely masculine, right? He will then say, oh, you daughters of the West, and we obviously have seen this in Leaves of Grass. Oh, you daughters of the West, oh, you young and elder daughters, oh, you mothers and you wives, never must you be divided in our ranks, you move united. Pioneers, oh, pioneers. Think about the right to vote, of course, is 18 of August, 1920. So we've got, we, obviously, we've got a number of years before Whitman's prediction will finally come true. Then in passage 22, he goes to the artists. Minstrels laden on the prairies. It's the only reference, actually, in this poem to anything like the prairies. Shrouded, and then he has it in parenthetics, right? Shrouded barbs of other lands. Now, of course, who are these bards? Obviously, he's talking Homer, Virgil, for sure. Of other lands, you may rest. You have done your work. So what is it that Whitman says to the greatest poets, Homer and Virgil and Milton and Dante and the rest of them? He says, you guys can stand on down. You've done your job. Now it's our turn. Of course, we might be saying a little bit about our turn. You remember that classic moment in Dante's Inferno? We talked about this at LearnStrong.net in, in some detail. And um, he goes to, you'll remember, he goes to the, uh, to the underworld uh, and there in limbo and great poets all say, hey, is that the great poet Dante? We may be playing a similar, a similar game here, right? Um, and, and, and he says, soon I hear you coming warbling, you'll remember this from starting from Pominock 10, warbling under the sun, right? Warbling, soon you rise and tramp amid us. And of course, tramp takes us to Song of Myself, Passage 46, I tramp a perpetual journey, come listen all, as well as obviously Song of the Open Road. And then he'll start with this 
this uh, um, game that he plays with the word not, right, N-O-T. Not for delectation sweet. And this, by the way, is the only use of that word, delectations. And now we're going to sound very much like Song of the Open Road, Passage 13, when he talks about come out from behind the veil, right? The soft, not the cushion and the slipper, not the peaceful and the studious. Think about the irony of that because so much of Leaves of Grass has been challenging us to live a life of peace and to be a student. And yet, what's he really saying? Well, he's saying Europeans have become soft. Later, he'll use the word corpulent, fat. Lazy. We are not that at all, he says. Not the riches safe and palling. Now, of course, this palling, you know, like as opposed to tan faced, right? Like white. Not for us the tame enjoyment. You'll remember from Song of Myself, Passage 52, that echo, I too am not a bit tamed, right? Enjoyment, pioneers, oh pioneers. Now, we'll finish with the final three stanzas 24. A series of some six questions. Do the festers I'm sorry, do the feasters gluttonous feast? By the way, the only use of the word gluttonous in all of Leaves of Grass is here. Do the feasters feast, the gluttonous feast? Do the corpulent, also the only use in all Leaves of Grass of this word, sleepers sleep? Have they locked and bolted doors? Still the hours, the diet hard, and the blanket on the ground. Pioneers, oh pioneers. In other words, he is definitely making a distinction. Now I think, as I've said to you guys many times, I think Whitman was very influenced by Tom Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence. Let facts be submitted to a candid world. That idea of a candid world. That idea that Europe is watching, Europe is watching. Only now, Whitman's going to take that idea one step further, and he's basically going to insult the European great powers, the great empires, right? And he's going to say about them what? Well, they're fat. They're, 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 uh, corpulent. They're lazy. They love to sleep all the time. Whereas, Americans, we, uh, very smart, and this will remind us, of course, of play.